Okay, this is part three of my tutorial series on uh, cycles and materials and nodes. And this is a really easy lesson as well. All right, so now what we've done, all we're using so far are shaders in here. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at textures. Now there's a, several type of textures to consider. One is like image textures that like you saw in this other video here, right in here. So this is just an image map. It's a PNG file that well, I generated that inside a paint program of mine. I mapped it on here, but it's just an image. And that's one type of texture. It could be a movie or it could be a sequence of still images that are mapped on. And so those are kind of considered image textures, you know. But there's another type of texture. They're called procedural textures. And procedural are basically like, they're like a math procedure or a programming procedure somebody like me who's a programmer I would write something and I would say you know maybe draw this color and move this direction over and over again and repeat the pattern over and over again and do that to the surface of say this object right here so it's done procedurally it's not actually a physical map that's set somewhere that you would copy into the scene and that you would paste onto here that you would do like that other one, like if you'd looked at my old videos where we were doing image mapping before, you would take an object and you would mark seams on the object and then you would have to basically split that object apart and then you'd go into the UV window and you'd kind of match your image to the object. All right, that, so those are image textures, but we're going to use procedural textures. So that they're definitely two distinct animals. All right, so we're going to come down here and we're just going to add a texture. And these are procedural type textures. And you can go into the Blender website. And bl the one thing that's really nice about Blender is nowadays the documentation has greatly improved compared to the old days from, say, six, seven years ago when I was using Blender. Back then it was, you know, look around, try to find what you can and everything. Now it's becoming quite consistent and very nice, and you should definitely take advantage of it. Or you know you somebody like me comes along I can decipher it maybe over the course of an hour or two or something like that and then I can turn around and make you a five or ten minute tutorial so you can save your time just by watching these videos huh okay because videos are definitely easier than reading through material I like reading through material I don't know why so we're gonna add this texture in here and we're gonna add I don't know we'll just add these are kinda common we'll use a musgrave texture and Let's see, we're going to zoom out. Maybe we'll move all these over just a little bit like this. We're going to just move these out of the way. We could go grab them and move them as a group, but that's all right. We'll just do this for now. All right. And notice, I can, I can just get this little yellow. Well, I can either put it into there, or I can put it into there, or I could go get another texture and put one into there at the same time. Maybe we'll put it in down here into the, into the diffuse shader like this. I'll move this window over so we can see it, see the whole thing a little bit better. All right, so now, so now this is a matter of, let's just connect it for starters. All right, and notice it's still all green, but you remember that's because this thing's set at zero. We know zero is going to be all of this in here for that top one. So I'm going to crank this all to one right now. That means this translucent texture doesn't even come into play right now. It's like it's as if it was disconnected. Well, so now here suddenly is this material piped into this diffuse shader, piped into the mix shader that has, even though it's mixing with this turned off essentially, and there's our final result. So this is great because now you can just come into here and you can just change things in here. Let's change the scale. That's obvious. You can see, watch this. This is easy. Just changing the scale, you can notice how quickly modifies the texture and this is kind of like the way I like to work I took I took an art class in college it was a sketching class and the one of the most interesting things about that class was we had to sketch on paper and you just kind of had to scribble on paper and we kind of scribbled around and then once you had all of this big scribbling in pencil in front of you you kind of had to let your mind kind of just find an image in the paper and you'd see an image based on all these scribbles and then you'd you know, start developing your 
image from there. And that's the same way I used to do with clouds when I was young. I'd always lay on the ground for hours and on end watching the clouds and seeing shapes and images pop up in view. Well, that's kind of the same way I work with textures too. I don't really kind of think, oh, I need this kind of texture. I kind of like to work. Well, I want to, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this around. And, you know, sometimes I'll get into, I'll find a certain color, you know, that works right for me and, and then, uh, or the texture that works. And that kind of brings the idea forward about something else in a scene that I might want to build. It's kind of backwards, but, you know, all of our brains don't work the same, you know, it's just, it's different. But, so anyway, so you can put that texture in there, or let's just cut that out of there real quick. So that's one kind of texture, and then let's go get another one. Let's go get a different texture. We'll go get a gradient texture. Well, gradients sounds just what they look like. You know, let's see. Oh yes, I do these in my programming stuff all the time. Quadratic. Look at that nice shading effects like that, huh? I mean, how about a spherical gradient? Well, a spherical gradient really wouldn't work well on that kind of object, but I bet on a sphere it would work really well, right? And uh, diagonal, just like it, just like it says, right? And notice the shading in here, the shadows in cycles is really cool. In fact, let's just we'll do a better rendering here in a second, just because, but you notice this one shadow in here. See how these shadows are nice and soft in here? Go compare that to, you know, regular Blender Render when you put a spotlight in the scene and go look at the shadows. And they're they're hard-edged and they have nothing that looks anywhere similar to that. You can kind of fake it, but it's not even the same. And you can tell, well, over here, if I took this light up here and I just cranked it up, maybe I made it 10, you'll see that extra shadow popping in on this side here kind of blows out the scene but oh there it is okay but you can see how the extra shadow pops in because that light's brighter on that side all right that kind of gives you an idea so now between textures now you can make all kinds of procedural textures in the scene you could do add a well we could do the same thing now I click this one here and, and move this to the center this doesn't have anything into it I don't even have a mixer in here but I could add different shader different procedural texture let's see what the wave texture looks like okay as so I move this over here I'll just put the wave texture up here, connect it up here like this, like that. Oh, there's that applied to this surface down here. I mean, look at that. I mean, come on, how easy. But so a fast computer certainly does help. But this is this computer's, you know, two and a half years old easily. It's an early generation uh, Pentium. Okay. Well, I hope that gives you some more ideas, and I'll see you in the next lesson.